Yes, yes, Kenya. Tamu sana, tamu sana, tamu sana, yes. William Ruto is clearly a man under siege. Just remaining four days to the D-Day, Ruto is already feeling the heat. And he might be realizing the reasons why all former presidents, starting with Moi, Kibaki, Uhuru Kenyatta, had to make peace with Raila Odinga. Something tells me very strongly he might have started realizing that. Raila Odinga was in Kiambu County today and the police tried blocking him from addressing Kiambu residents. The police failed. Raila successfully addressed Kiambu residents. And as I talked some few minutes ago, we received some news, though not verified, that Ruto has directed all police commanders across the country not to interfere with Raila's planned nationwide mass action. Though that's not a verified news. But in the event it's true, or not true. I want us to dig deep into this story and I'll explain some reasons why William Ruto has no option but to take a U-turn to let Rael Odinga and the new Brigade proceed with their Monday's mass action without interference. That's what I want us to discuss in this video right now. And before we discuss that, there is also a very interesting developing story. BBC News has shared out a very interesting news here. BBC News, Putin arrest warrant issued over war crime allegations. This evening, BBC is reporting that a warrant of arrest has been issued against Russia's president, Vladimir Putin, for war crimes he has committed in Ukraine. This is very interesting, ladies and gentlemen. So nobody is actually above the law. If a powerful figure like Putin, a warrant of arrest can be issued against him. Who is William Ruto? Let's dig deep, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. I've listened to Tarakaninthi governor, Mudomi Njuki, talking this night. He was at Citizen News. I saw him talking during the news bulletin. And he was saying that maybe, or rather he was trying to insinuate something, that maybe Raila Odinga wants maybe even one person to be injured for the international community to come in. He was trying to insinuate something like that. That's a very close William Ruto ally. And that might also be a thinking within William Ruto's inner circle. These demonstrations, a section of William Ruto's allies might be seeing these demonstrations as a trap for William Ruto. So it's up to William Ruto to actually enter the trap, into the trap. Because I honestly believe that a peaceful demonstration where an armed citizens are exercising their rights as enshrined in the constitution, any government that tries to interfere with that can lead to so many deaths. And we have just seen this evening, a warrant of arrest has been issued against Russia's president. And that warrant of arrest, I know might have sent chills 
in William Ruto's team. Especially that now Monday, <laughs> the opposition has dubbed it a date with destiny. And looking at Raila Odinga, I'm seeing Raila Odinga who has decided Kama ni mbaya, wacha iwe mbaya. William Ruto is still a young man. He still has a long way to go. He's still a young man. And I don't think William Ruto will be ready to actually ruin his future. So let's have a look at some reasons why I honestly believe William Ruto has no option but to take a U-turn, to relax, to let Ray Rudin and his team proceed peacefully with their mass action. The first reason, William Ruto has been to Hague as a result of post-election violence that were witnessed in 2007. And this case, has not been concluded. In the event he sends the police to interfere with the planned demonstrations, the blame, in my honest opinion, will lie squarely on him. Because it will be the police butchering innocent and armed, armed Kenyans, Kenyans who are not armed. So the blame will lie squarely with him and with his security officers. I'm seeing a William Ruto who still has a vivid memory of the Hague. The Hague bells are still ringing very loudly in William Ruto's ears. So he might not, he, he, he might not be ready to go that route. Because of that, he might not interfere or he has no option but not to interfere with Monday's mass action. The second reason, if you look at the planned demonstrations, in the event they will be peaceful without government interfering, I don't think they will achieve the objective. I honestly believe that maybe the opposition in this case wants some running battles a bit. The opposition supporters want that. And we have even seen opposition supporters making it very clear that Mandamano without tears is not Mandamano. So it might be possible that the opposition with their supporters are setting William Ruto up for the police to interfere upon the police interfering that will grab the attention of the international community. Yes. The moment the police starts interfering, lives might, might be lost. That will grab the attention of the international community. William Ruto and Raila Odinga will now be forced maybe to sit at a table and Raila will be asked, Ruto will be asked, what is it you are fighting for? Rather, what is it? Raila will tell Ruto, I want the servers to be opened. Ruto will say, the servers can't be opened. And I'm seeing a very high possibility where these two leaders might be eventually forced to work together. Though that's my opinion. Anyway. So in the event the police interferes, there will be maybe a bloodbath. Lives will be lost. That will grab the attention of the international community. The third point, Ruto is not very sure and confident on how the security forces might respond. In the event he gives an order for the police to crack, hmm, to crack down on the demonstrators, assuming the police partially 
or rather the police maybe implement that order half-heartedly or they fail to implement it at all. Because in Kenya, we know that the police force is not independent. Phone calls are coming from above. The director, the inspector general, is being directed on what to do. In the event the inspector, general, inspector of police is directed, the inspector general is directed, and then it, he directs his commanders, and the commanders implement that order half-heartedly, or they fail to implement it at all, that will be William Ruto's Waterloo moment. I don't think he's ready for that kind of an embarrassment. So Ruto might take a back seat a bit and let as a new team and their brigades proceed with their mass action. I don't think he has any option but to do that. And then finally, I'm also seeing a very high possibility looking at William Ruto what William Ruto says in public is very different from what he does in private. In public, he talks the exact opposite. It might be possible that Ruto is secretly reaching out to Ray Lodinga. So the police might not go after the new supporters for Ruto not to annoy him or to end Rai Lodinga. He might be reaching out to Rai Lodinga. All these are just possibilities. Yes, all these are all possibilities. But one thing for sure, if Moi was forced to have a handshake with Rai Lam, Kibaki forced to have a handshake, Uhuru forced to have a handshake, William Ruto is not in any way special now that according to Chemukati it was an almost tie going by what Chemukati announced. I don't think William Ruto will be any special not to reach out to Rai Lodinga. And from what is there, Raila supporters are not interested in Rai Lodinga having a handshake with William Ruto. So Raila is also actually in a fix. But a working agreement can actually be reached. And I'm seeing William Ruto reaching out to Raila Odinga very disparately to make peace. Let me stop it there, ladies and gentlemen. In our next video, I'm working on a video where Babu Owino has dropped some bombshell on the police. And that bombshell is seen as targeting William Samoy Ruto. And it's all about Monday's mass action. Stay tuned for that analysis by subscribing to our channel. If you want to support the forum, I've pinned my number on the comment section. Contact me through the number or feel free to channel your support to the number. Let's meet in our next analysis.